From a small town in Kentucky to a glamorous lifestyle in New York City, Miss USA 2006, Tara Connor began living out her dream come true. But with her success came excessive partying and addiction to alcohol. As her reign comes to an end, Connor told Harry Smith about the stay in rehab that gave her a second chance. How long have you been out of rehab? Oh, um, two months, month and a half. It's been a six, while. Six, seven weeks, something it's like that. It's been a while, yeah. yeah. I've been so busy that I haven't, I just, I don't know, I've been all over the place. Yeah. Serious question right off the top. Okay. Have you stayed sober? I have. Yeah. I have 100 days sober today. 100 days today? Uh-huh. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Are you really in one day at a time? Yeah, I have to take things one day at a time. There's so many things that I could be projecting on right now and having anxiety about and, you know, because it's a huge transition and typically, you know, addicts and alcoholics are afraid of change, but I'm, I'm really just ready to embrace every day and see how it works out. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's going really, really well so yeah. far. I remember that news conference with Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Did you know then you were addicted to alcohol? No. No, I was in complete denial during the news conference. Right. I was in complete denial probably about a week and a half into rehab, mm -hmm. and then that's when I figured it out. <laughs> I was like, this person over here is crazy, and I'm just like him. <laughs> person sitting next to yeah, you. Yeah, we all had the same story, you know? I mean, it's all the same. It is all the same. Yeah. When you have so many people around you that have been through the same experience and had the same, you know, issues, and, you know, they can sit there and say, you know what, I have an issue. I'm, I still, it took me so long to just uh, say, I, I, I have a problem. You, you know, know what? People want this to be real for you, and people want you to be better. Right. But this is the celebrity, you know, sort of excuse of the day. You know, I drive my car into a tree, and I'm going to go to rehab, or, <laughs> you know, fall off the way. How do you know this is real for you? How do you know you've got you your know, life straight? You know, for me, out? it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a publicity thing just mm -hmm. to say, hey, you know, I'm going to go to rehab, and it'll all go away. It wasn't that at all, because I had the option, resign mm -hmm. or go to rehab for 30 days. Yeah. And I took the rehab, because obviously I thought, God's put me here for a reason. Mm. I'm not just going to have to go to rehab for no reason whatsoever. You know, so while I was there, I realized how how unmanageable my life was. I mean, it was so insane, you yeah. know, the way I used to be. I was very manipulative. I was, you know, I lied a lot. I, I had these masks that I wore everywhere I went, like a different mask for a different day. Mm. You know, I was a one-person act. And um, it just, ever since I've been sober, it's been a thousand times better. How do you stay straight? How do I stay straight? Mm -hmm. um, well, of course, you have to take it one day at a time. Yeah. You know, I say my prayers in the morning when I wake up, mm -hmm. and I have daily meditations that I read. And, yeah. You know, I do 12-step program. And Why do you think Donald Trump took a chance on you? I, I think that he has a brother that suffered from alcoholism, and he understood what I couldn't understand. And a lot of people don't understand anything about alcoholism or addiction. Yeah. They think it's a disease, or they don't, no, they don't think it's a disease. They think that it's just something that you have an issue with. You yeah, go the to character rehab. flaw. Right, and they think, okay, well, then eventually, you know, you'll go to rehab and you'll be able to control your use. It's not right. that at all. I can never pick up again. Yeah. I can never pick up again. Because if I do, I'll end up dead. It'll end up killing me, mm. you know, or I'll end up in jail or something. It's a pretty serious realization for somebody who's is. 21 years old. It is. It's very sad because, you know, because the, the addictive nature and the gene that makes you, it's mm -hmm. a physical craving. If I put it in my system, any, any kind of form of alcohol, drug whatsoever, right. the tiniest bit will make me crave more mm. and make me crave more and then my, my thinking will become distorted and... <sighs> It's just, it's a, it's a process, it's yeah. a, and it, my disease is still progressing, although I'm not picking up, my disease is yeah. still growing and growing and growing. You know, there were people, when Donald Trump gave you this second chance, mm -hmm. there were people said, she doesn't deserve right. it. Right. She blew her opportunity. Mm -hmm. And when you were in rehab and even now, you spent so much time in the pageant system. Right. You know, as a teen contestant, mm -hmm. as a, you know, a, a Miss Kentucky, everything else, mm -hmm. to have achieved everything you sought out to achieve. Right. Do you know why you blew it? No, I mean, to me, it was, it was an ongoing process that mm. made me blow it, if you want to call it that. And a lot of people do have a, a strict opinion about, you know, she shouldn't have deserved a second chance. She shouldn't have gotten a second chance. Right. But, you know, the thing is, is because of these stigmas that are attached, I've had people ask me every day, do you think you tarnished the crown? Mm. Well, you know, maybe I did. But the bad thing about that is, is if everyone thinks of alcoholism and addiction or the disease in general as a negative thing, no one's going to want to go get help. Yeah. No one wants that stigma attached to them. I'm an alcoholic or I'm an addict, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. well, every time someone asks me that, it really upsets me because I'm thinking, 
a young person that has an issue that's not telling anyone right now Lord just heard you say that. Out there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They heard you say that, so therefore they're going to be afraid to come out and say, you know what, I need a little bit of help. Because mm. you can't do it by yourself. So, I mean, that's it's a really, really hard thing. I mean, that's that's something that I want to try to work on. What's going to happen to you now? What do you want to happen Sky's to you Sky's the limit, you know? I mean, I wanted to stay in New York, but now there's all these wonderful things popping up in L.A., and I'm thinking, I'm just going to jump back and forth, but, you know? Uh, but that is not so, so sunny and rosy either. I mean, people have said, you know, oh, you could pose for Playboy and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have some serious choices ahead of you. Oh, I have some well, amazing choices. The great thing is I have opportunities left and right, you know? It's just, I, I'm just going to take the path that I think is the right path for me. You know, I want to I try a lot of things. There's so many different things that I want to do before I'm finished, before mm. I retire, before I'm done, you yeah. know. And Where are you going to be one year from now? One year from now. Um, clean and sober, God willing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't want to project on it. You know, there's, there's talk of Broadway. There's talk of doing correspondent work like on the Tire Show. There's talk mm. of, you know, getting into some music. I plan on writing a book. You know, there's a lot of different things that I mm. want to do. Well, Hopefully you have a story just, to tell, that's for sure. I definitely have a story to tell. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is true.